Hello everyone, I'm reading Bionicle Radon Volcanus. This is chapter one, part two. Okay, let's start. The bone hunter was starting to get up. Gelu took a few quick steps and kicked Pharaoh's sword away from him. That was when he spotted something else in the sand. It was a piece of parchment with what looked like a map drawn on it. Keeping his blade close enough to strike Pharaoh, he made a move and he picked it up. A swift scan showed it was a detailed map of the village of Volcanus. There was a series of dates shown on the side with a number beside each. What is this? Asked Galu. Go to the sandbog, Pharaoh spat. I'm not telling you anything. Galu snatched up his, his Thornax launcher and aimed it towards Skirmix. Want to walk home? Pharaoh looked at his mount and then back at Galu. His expression was cold as Isinox ice. If I have to, Galu frowned. It was said that a bone hunter's draws could clamp shut tighter than a rock dra than a rock dragon's on a meal. If Pharaoh didn't want to talk, he wasn't going to. Gelu wondered if he should kill the bone hunter, but decided against it. It would only paint a target on his back for every other member of Pharaoh's tribe. Gelu got back on his sandstalker, and he fired a thornax above Skernik's head and one right in front of his nose. The beast backed off a half dozen paces. <clears throat> then Gelu ur urged his mount forward. The sandstalker stepped on Pharaoh's launcher, producing a very satisfying crunch. You might want to start learning to share, said Gelu as he rode away. By the time he caught up to their transport, it was in pretty bad shape. A small band of zesk had appeared up out of the sand and made off with more than half of its contents before the Agori villagers could scare them off. They grumbled about being left to defend themselves. Gelly reminded them that bone hunters don't scare as easily as Zesk. Pharaoh wouldn't have left them anything, including their lives. The remaining right to Tejun was uneventful and gave Gelly time to study the map he had taken from Pharaoh. It seemed strange. For one thing, bone hunters usually wrote in their own language, which was different from Agori. It would have been most, almost impossible for an outsider to read. Once or twice he had seen a hunter carrying something with scrawl markings on it, most likely found when riding around the northern waste near Rock, Roxtus. The bone hunters wouldn't be stupid enough to attack the fierce scrawl warriors, but they weren't above the looting dead, above looting dead ones. <clears throat> the notes scrawled on this map, however, were in perfect agori. Perfect agori. It was more than just a standard map of how to get to and from Volcanus. Each outer wall was marked, along with every other defense in the village had in place. Galu had been to the village a week before, and there were things on this chart that hadn't been there then. This has to be a brand new document, but how did it get in the hands of a bone hunter? Gelu was still pondering these questions as he walked the streets of Tejun. The village consisted of a single massive structure beneath which were a small, a series of small crudely made shelters. Tejun was located on top of an oasis, so water was never an issue for the residents. For everything else, they relied on trade, with the bone hunter's interference in recent months the villagers weren't hurting. <clears throat> Even the sm small amount of goods in the Isonox transport was welcome. Gelu spotted Metis and Agori from his village. Metis was a Glatorian trainer and promoter. He traveled Barramagnet looking for good fighters and set up matches between villages. For him, Tejun was now the place to be. I never saw anything like it, he said to Gelu. These people need everything. Food, tools, spare parts, you name it. And they're willing to take ch challenges to get them. Terex and Kina have s had six matches in the last week. They're both starting to wear out. Gelu could understand that. The two Glatorian were both veteran fighters. But at that pace, with so much riding on each match, anyone would get run down. Hey said Menace, eyeing Gelu for the first time. You're pretty good in the arena. T 
Cajun will give you double what Isinox does if you win a few for them. Gailu shook his head. Sorry, Mattis. I'm out of that game for now. I like doing es ec uh, escort work. Keeps me on the move. Got it, Mattis replied after a momentary look of disappointment. Well, if you change your mind, so far I've managed to recruit... All, so far, all I've managed to recruit is a kid named Gresh from Tessera. Not bad. Still needs training, but not bad. We're headed to Volcanus for a match today. Geller remembered the map in his bag. Someone in Volcanus would probably be very interested in seeing it. And Gellu had to admit that he was intrigued by the mystery himself. A lot of bone hunters between here and there, he said. Could, you could use an extra sword. Mind if I tag along? That was the end of chapter one. Stay tuned for chapter two. And goodbye.